Are you thinking about buying or selling a home or want to know what might be going on with one of your biggest investments? Then come hang out with us for a little while. Hi, I'm Kirk Duckwall and welcome to the Twin Cities Real Estate Show. Our local sponsors are Bricks Real Estate, Network Title, Eric Bloomstrand and Chad Preeby with Bell Bank Mortgage, Structure Tech Home Inspections, James Tufson with Country Financial, along with Cregan's Construction and Grey Duck Staging and Design. Yep. You can catch us across all your devices, whether that's on TV, on the CW23 Saturday mornings at 6.30 or KSTC Saturday mornings at 6, on the radio at AM 950 Sundays at noon, also on YouTube or Facebook by just typing in Twin Cities Real Estate Show, or you can also podcast us anytime, again, by typing in Twin Cities Real Estate Show. Don't forget to check us out online anytime at TwinCitiesRealEstateShow.com. There you can find all of our past shows, our weekly market updates, along with the latest and greatest searching and researching tools and our free publications to include the Smart Home Buyer Guide and the Smart Seller Guide, along with the Bricks Report. All of these free for you. If you have any real estate questions, please feel free to give us a call. 651-303-0019. Again, 651-303-0019. Happy to help answer any of your real estate questions or assist with your real estate needs. Thank you again for joining us today. I would like to welcome Corey Colburn from Structure Tech Home Inspections coming in today. One of the home inspectors. I know we've had your boss on a couple times, Ruben, in the past, but you're out in the field there every day. And we're going to kind of talk about home inspection red flags um, and what we're going to be covering. Make sure you check us out the Smart Home Buyer Guide. You can download our red flag walk around checklist. A lot of what we're going to be touching on is in there. Also, a whole bunch of other great tips for the home buying process. Also, Bree Lynch, thank you so much for coming in. You're going to help us uh, navigate some of the questions. Also, you're out in the field every day showing homes as well as well as I. And so we know the importance of really having that, that eagle eye on the homes as, as we're looking around. Uh, Corey, why don't you introduce us a little bit to yourself and, and, and the company? Uh, yeah. Uh, thanks, Kirk. Thanks for having me. Uh, again, my name is Corey Colburn with Structure Tech Home Inspections. I am a, I'm a team lead and a home inspector trainer. Um, I've been with Structure Tech for about four years now. Uh, and, and I've been kind of working in and around houses most of my life. I think it, that's, that's really great that you touched on the home inspector trainer because it doesn't actually, there is no licensing requirements for right. home inspectors in the state of Minnesota, right? Correct. And to, to actually have a company that cares about making sure that, um, you know, their, their new inspectors are getting out. About how many home inspections do you do with, with somebody who's, who's new into the, the business before really letting them off on their own? Oh. Um, I know I'm throwing those curveballs at you. Yeah. <laughs> it varies. It varies, yeah. but I'd say a couple hundred. A couple hundred. Yeah, a and, lot. Yeah, and, and the inspectors go through, so, like, or the company also, like, the the ASHI, um, right? I got that correct? Correct. Yeah, uh, the certification. Certified with ASHI. Yeah. yeah. Now, oh. you mentioned um, some time time in uh, in the business or been been around real estate. Um, yeah, you said your whole life? Yeah, pretty much my whole life. Uh, working with my dad, doing remodeling homes, small construction things, um, you know, background in, in plumbing. Uh, yeah, pretty much you name it, inside and outside. Um for, for, for decades, like I said, uh, working around houses. I love it. Like, well, it, it is it is an addictive industry. <laughs> <you know? laughs> yeah. It's one of those things. I mean, I think, Bree, you would agree, like, one of the favorite parts about this, this real estate is, you know, every day is something different. Every day, something yeah. different. You yeah. always, always see something new yep. out yep. there. And so. that's true with, you know, inspecting homes. Um, in Minneapolis, we have such a wide array of Old homes, new construction homes, so meeting up with home inspectors who, number one, have been in the industry for a long time, but then two, um, understand what type of home they're inspecting and being able to relay that to, especially for me, I work with a lot of first-time home buyers. Right. So an important part when I'm referring out inspectors is 
how is that inspector going to take the language that they know since they've been around it for 20 plus years and uh, relay it to my, you know, 22 year old first time home buyer. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's it. It is one of those things where it, it's very easy to uh, scare a buyer about something that isn't necessarily scary. And we're actually going to touch on that one in the next segment. We're going to cover, you know, what are the main red flags, but also what are some of the ones that aren't so scary. And it's kind of interesting because they kind of intersect a little bit, it, but it, it's because, you know, water isn't just one thing. It, it's a spectrum of an issue that can be there. And right. I think you'll agree with me mm -hmm. on that. Um, so I, uh, yeah, I know I met, uh, I met your dad. That's a, how we got introduced, uh, working on one of my first rehab projects. Yeah. And, um, so how long have you been doing the, the home inspections yourself now and, and being on that team, like in, in transitioning into that team lead? Uh, so for about four years, four years. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, about 300 inspections per year. Um, it's about as good. I show only about 400 a year. So you're yeah. doing 300 inspections. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's insane. Yeah. And it's, but that's, that's part of being with the, the structure tech team too, was we have, we have a, a lot of, um, a lot of information that we share with each other. We have a lot of opportunity to see a lot of stuff. Yeah. It's not just me on my own, uh, uh, doing the, doing the business side, doing the inspecting. Um, it's, it's a team effort. Yeah. Well, I know that uh, we're going to be having, having Ruben back in uh, here in a couple of weeks, and we're actually going to be talking about that new construction inspection cool. as well. So that, you know, stay tuned for that show. We're going to take a quick commercial break. When we come back, again, we're going to be talking about inspection red flags. We'll see you here in a couple minutes. Hi, I'm Ruben with Structure Tech Home Inspections. Everyone knows you should have a home inspection before you buy a home, but we've heard of home buyers being encouraged to skip the home inspection in this crazy market to make their purchase offer more attractive. Now they're facing tens of thousands of dollars in unexpected repairs. I'm telling you now, don't skip the home inspection. Here at Structure Tech, we can get your home inspected quickly and we offer a full line of services. Visit us online at structuretech.com to learn more. Don't fall for the billboards or the clickbait. There is no such thing as today's rate. Mortgages and mortgage rates are individual to you. Chad Preby and Eric Bloomstrand with Bell Bank Mortgage are here to show you the formula to get your best rate. Once you know this formula, you can mortgage shop with confidence. Find us online at chadpreby.com. That is chadpreby.com, NMLS, 1462493, Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. Hi, I'm Kurt Duckwell with Bricks Real Estate and the Twin Cities Real Estate Show. Buying or selling a home is one of the biggest financial transactions people make. Before you make your next move, download our free smart home buyer or smart seller guides to give you the edge in our real estate market. From deal hunting to knowing the right repairs for maximizing value, these free guides have it all. Check them out and more at BricksTwinCities.com under publications. Welcome back to the Twin Cities Real Estate Show. Fun topic today, talking about inspection red flags. Have Corey Colburn with Structure Tech. Thank you again for coming in today. Uh, real quick, before we get into some of those those red flags, I know you had mentioned, you know, one of the things for you is, is having an inspector um, who knows how to talk to first time home buyers. And yeah. I know that that is, a, you know, it, it, it's a big purchase. It's one of the biggest financial decisions most people ever make. So, you know, what would you say, how is your approach when you, you know, get into a home and you have that list? Because I mean, every inspection is gonna have 50, 100 <laughs> items yeah. laid out on there, you know? Yeah. So I, it really it's it's so much information, especially for a first time home buyer. I really like working with home first time home buyers. I do. There's a lot of questions, um, <laughs> and one of my favorite parts about doing inspections is kind of teaching people about the house and, and how it works. Um, but you know, with that thought in mind, it, it try to stay objective when I'm providing or providing the information of the house. Typically, when we do an inspection, uh, we invite clients to come for the last hour, where I can really already have done the inspection, have everybody come, you guys, uh, the clients, and really focus on the, the important parts of the house mm -hmm. for that last hour of kind of the four hour typical time period. Yeah. And with that, then I can really, you can, you can hear the, the sound of my voice. Um, 
is this a big deal or is it not? And and then and and I really try to let people know, hey, our, our inspections are, our, our reports are going to be 60 pages long. There's going to be a lot of stuff there. If you're feeling overwhelmed, let me know. Yeah. Um, and, and really, it's really try not to scare people. Right. And that that's. Uh, well, and I, you, I know across. one of the things that you're great with with my clients is talking about that. What's common for a home of that age? Yeah, yeah you're going to run exactly. across this ground uh, ungrounded outlet in this 1950s Rambler, but you're going to run across that same ungrounded outlet in the next one you go after if it's another <laughs> 1950s Rambler. You yeah, know, just what the, the common items. Yeah, because yeah. I think that's one important thing to note, especially with first time home buyers, because a lot of them are coming in maybe with, you know mom or dad saying, you know, check for this, check for that. Yeah, make sure yeah inspector that. number two and three. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and they may be in a new construction home and their right. kids are, you know, looking to live in the city where the home is, you know, close to 100 years old. So right. really taking those terms into the yeah. age of the home. Right, yeah. yeah. So let's get into some of those those big red flags, the actual concerns. Um, I know you kind of have a list and and chat about them. And, and one of the first ones, you know, if, if you go to that smart home buyer guide and, and the red flag walk around checklist, I only have a few things that are really like, hey, this is a big deal. And that's that's the foundation stuff. So, sure. yeah, I mean, I know I know that's one of your big concerns, too. Uh, yeah. Uh, lar- bowing walls, large cracks with offsets. Uh, I can keep keep going. Yeah. 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 So like like when you say offset like displacement right right if 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 a, if a wall is if you can really see movement for us anything greater than a quarter of an inch in a block in a block wall that that's moved is, is really where we say hey this should be checked out further by uh, somebody who specializes in foundations right well and, and it's it's kind of funny because it's as i mentioned in the last segment there's really a spectrum right there that is. that's yeah. so Yes, foundations are one of those. I mean, to me, if I see a bowed wall by a few inches, I'm usually like, eh, maybe we should go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. But but on the same hand, in your not big scary things is also the the little cracks. Right. I, there's foundations that are cracked, and there are foundations that are going to crack. Everything right. settles. The, the the earth is fluid, and you have this solid foundation in this kind of a, a fluid earth right and especially in minnesota especially in minnesota we have heat high you know heat you know extreme cold and there's always going to be that that kind of differential there yeah um but yeah I, small cracks in foundations I, it'd be hard pressed not to find them <laughs> somewhere. right yeah, well, and, and, and I've heard like there's a there's a difference between, you know, a crack that runs straight through the wall versus something that's just following the block. Yeah, uh, yeah. But again, there's a spectrum for all right. of that. Yeah. But um, cracks are in most foundations, I would say. Well, with with foundations, let's let's talk about water, you know. <laughs> water management. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a big contributor to cracks and foundations. And and the number one thing that I look at when I'm approaching a house or while we're there is how does the house manage water? How, where are the roof lines? In newer houses, they look great. Uh, they're gable crazy, right? And mm-hmm. they have all these water points coming down on the roof line. Uh, a lot of new houses don't have gutters either. Um, no, it's like uh, I built a 2021 uh, house and, and yeah, it doesn't just come with, nope. you know, at least. Right. It's yeah. all additional. <laughs> yep. Uh, so water management. How does the house manage water? Does it do, do the gutters and downspouts get water out a good six feet away from the foundation? Um, is the, the the grading sloping away from the house to direct water out and away from the foundation? Well, I think that's important to bring up that grading and gutters because so often contractors will just jump right to you know you, you need a, a sump pump installed and it's yeah. like well why don't you start with where the water is coming from right. first before yep. getting to where it's it's causing the damage? Yeah, right. Um, but I mean, we'll get to this in a second, but, uh, you know, I, I use the same line that you used about foundations for water. There's two types of basements in Minnesota, those that have been wet and those that are going to get wet, yeah. you know, and sometimes it's not just water from, um, the outside. It's, you know, it could be an overflowed wash tub or overflowed, uh, or, you know, a leak on a condensation line or something like that. So sometimes, you know, it's, it's, just because it's water doesn't mean it's a huge deal. It's how did it happen and the story behind it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and Bree, you brought up a great question about the sewer lines. Yeah. So sewer lines, especially since I've been in the real estate industry, um, 
seems like every third house is having a sewer line crack in it. Um, and we were kind of talking about this, but why don't we go, I guess, a little bit further into, you know, why are we seeing so many sewer line cracks right now? Has it always been standard to test sewer lines or, or I guess scope through them? Um, I know you're not a sewer line expert, right. but I guess <laughs> we could dive in a little bit just to, you know, when did that become so frequent? Sure. Sure, and uh, I, I don't, uh, we do offer sewer scoping service. Um, and basically they'll run a camera up and down the sewer line and, and see all kinds of interesting things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not an expert in that, but I think that maybe we're seeing more issues with, with sewer lines now because we have the technology and more people are using the ancillary services of, of getting a sewer line scoped, okay. maybe additionally with a, with a home inspection. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you guys, as far as the spectrum of, of what's offered, you know, um, a lot of times with inspectors, it'll be this like, okay, well, you need to go get in a fireplace, you need to go get a sewer, you need to, you know, do these different things post paying for the initial inspection, you know, the inspectors recommending that, where you offer some of those services right out of the gate. Right. right? And so, um, and if, if people want to reach out, I know it's kind of, Middle, middle of the segment here, but if people do want to connect with you, um, want to get an inspection, what's the best way to do that? Oh, uh, uh, reach out to, to me directly or just call our office. And, and it's really great. Our, our office will kind of take over and set up everything. We'll reach out to the realtors, agents, yep. and it's real simple. One Ask. phone call, give the information, and they kind of take over and, and get it set up. The website, just the structure tech. Dot com. Yep, and you can also there's a, a scheduling uh, calendar on there too where you can you can sign up for inspection. Yeah, I know that's the, that's the way my wife would do it. Just not yeah. even talk to anybody. Yeah, the, <laughs> sure. the, the, I've noticed the one thing though with scheduling online versus calling. Sometimes yeah. there's like late minute cancellations that aren't reflected on the online oh, approach. Okay. So yeah. I always tell my clients, especially you know my first time home buyers, the the young <laughs> folks that are wanting to do yeah. everything, not talking to anyone, hop online. If there's nothing aligning with your schedule, call in. Call, see if there's any they opens. can usually yeah. work some things around. Yep. Let's jump into electrical. I know that's one that that's one of your big red flags that you like to look for. Sure, sure. As well. What are some of the things that stand out to you there? Because obviously, you know, that again, big spectrum. It can go from an ungrounded outlet to, right. you know, um, a, a federal specific panel or right. something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, houses built up until the 1940s could have knob and tube wiring in them. Knob and tube, it's, it's where you see two wires and they have knobs and tubes. Um, it's the oldest wiring that, that's out there. Um, I, that can be an issue with some insurance companies. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, you know, so we, we talk about it and point it out and again, kind of present the information and, and leave it up to clients to, to kind of make a decision, obviously offering our opinions uh, it gets a, a, a little more, it's more of a fire hazard if, if it's in insulation is where we become a little bit more concerned. And then do you usually see that in the attic or walls or both? It's attic. Okay. Uh, there can be, again, a house is built up until the 1940s, could have knob and tube wiring that we aren't even able to see. Yeah. Well, I think it's important to, to uh, break down, like I know I've had a lot of buyers, they see the two wire cloth wrapped uh, you know, with the, the paper inside, and they, they call they call that knob and tube because they see that the you know the black wrapped wire, right. and but it's two very different things. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, outside of knob and tube, are there any other big red flags on electrical? That you're... Uh, aluminum wiring, uh, uh, aluminum wiring. Um, one thing for me too is is uh, when I see a lot of handyman style kind of DIY. Um, improperly terminated wires. Um, How about the uh, good old uh, um, un ungrounded, um, and then just throw in the three prong, even though there isn't yeah. the grounding wire. Yeah, the ungrounded <laughs> yeah. three prong outlet. Yes, yeah, the uh, classic. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and honestly, you, you bring up a, a great point. The, the DIY or the handyman. I think the way you put it. Yep. Your dad? AKA my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he knows what he's doing. There might be some of that in my house, but. <laughs> um, I mean, th we run across this all the time mm -hmm. as we're out in showings and it's like, oh yeah, this is a handyman's house. And that's yeah. not a good term, no. <laughs> right? No. That that we, we see that and, 
you know, it's not just electrical. I mean, that can run the board mm -hmm. of, of stuff. Um, what are it, seen it, some uh, weird things with plumbing, maybe? Plumbing is is fun because <laughs> <laughs> water flows down, right? <laughs> but sometimes the pipes don't. In that direction. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah. But I mean, if you put enough water through, will it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Good water It'll come, come out the other side of yeah. somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, plumbing, plumbing things. That they're, that we have a, if, if you go to our website, um, we put all these fun pictures up. Yes. Um, I'd say there's a lot of funny plumbing things that okay. just, if you think about gravity, mm -hmm. <laughs> How is this possible? <laughs> are, there, are there specific things that come to front of mind with plumbing that are maybe cross contamination or dangerous to have with plumbing? Sure. Like are there things that you'd be like, get this checked out immediately that come to the top of mind? When there are a number of areas mind? in a house that you could have, when you, when you say specifically cross contamination or you know backflow, where mm -hmm. there should be backflow prevention at the exterior faucets. Okay. Uh, and basically it's really, really simple. Okay. They make a small device that you can attach to a faucet uh, at the exterior or a laundry tub is another okay. spot um, where you should have really have backflow prevention. Okay. And that's that's because if you have a a hose kind of laying in a pool of water, if there's any sort of uh, uh, back pressure in that system, you could potentially pull water into back into the system. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, yeah, and I mean, I suppose anything where you have the sewer gas directly leaking through. As nice. well, dry traps. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yep. Yeah. Or no traps. <laughs> yeah. Or no traps. Yeah. yeah. Uh, stand pipes. Unused yeah. stand pipes for uh, clothes washing, uh, washing machines, floor drains. A lot of times, yeah. floor, people forget that there's even a floor drain, and it should mm -hmm. have water in it to prevent right. that's those sewer gases from entering the house. Okay. I know it's something we come across. You go into that house and, you know, it's been vacant for a while. Like, yeah. What's uh -huh. that smell coming? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's usually a wash tub or, yep. or something like that. Um, so, you know, serious electrical issues, serious foundation issues, serious water issues, sewer. I mean, the sewer one, I mean, if, if there's a split line, that could be 12 grand out of the gate. Right. Mm. But on the same hand, there's things that aren't such a big deal that maybe get blown out of proportion a little bit. Now, I think the best way to describe this is in small amounts or small instances, these are very common. Um, let's, let's start off with the, 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 the M word. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, mold, mold. Yeah. Right? I'm saying it. Yeah, thank I'll you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, let's give the viewers what we're talking about here. Um, <laughs> It, mold is everywhere. Mold exists in our in our atmosphere, our, our surrounding. Um, you know how how much mold? What is the cause of the mold? Yeah. Is there an ongoing leak somewhere that is causing mold behind a wall or below a kitchen sink, or or do we see mold in uh, 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 entryway closet? Yep. Here's a here's a particular here's a good one. Entryway closet. Uh, it, it, they're not heated, so it's cold in there. You can get kind of, if there's a lot of items in there. I'm saying mid mid century Rambler, yep. Yep. Um, entryway closet, uh, not a lot of uh, uh, ventilation there. Yep. Condensation stuff, moisture there. Take your stuff out, clean it up, paint over it. Try to keep make it ventilated. Well, yeah, I mean, with this temperature differentials that we get in this state, I mean, on a humid, hot summer day, that you can get just a little condensation on that block, you can get mold yep. that builds up. Yep. So um, that that just happens, but it's not necessarily excessive all the way up the mold or up the wall kind of mold that we're talking about. Right. You know. So um, you know. In, in small amounts, it can be dealt with relatively easily, yep. um, and as well as it can be a good negotiating point for, from a buyer if they do come across it, you know, and, and you know that you can get it taken care of. Um, there's other ones I know you mentioned, as, asbestos, we run into asbestos siding and so, sometimes, yep. or asbestos tile. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. Not every title company is the same. There are many people involved with each real estate transaction and all of them need to be in the loop or a closing may get delayed. This is why the people at Network Title strive to provide swift scheduling and communication between the buyers, sellers, agents, and lenders. We know moving can be stressful, however your closing does not need to be. Check us out online at network-title.com. 
My name is James Tobson with Country Financial. Anyone can sell you insurance. However, is it going to be the insurance you need? When life pops up with its surprises, you want the right coverage. When it comes time to find or renew your policy, give me a call. I would love to review your existing policy and show you what I can do for you. You can email me at james.tobson at countryfinancial.com or give me a call at 651-365-3408. Hi, I'm Becca, owner of Grey Duck Staging. With today's home buyers beginning their journey exclusively online, the look and feel of your home matters more than ever. Whether it's a simple in-home consultation, a refresh using your current furniture, or a whole home staging, our goal is always the same. Showing your home in the best light and helping you achieve the highest sales price possible. To learn more, visit us at greyduckstaging.com or check us out on Instagram at greyduckstaging. Welcome back to the Twin Cities Real Estate Show. I'd like to thank uh, Bree Lynch again for coming in today. Absolutely. And Corey Colburn with Structure Tech. Real quick, what is it that you enjoy most, your favorite favorite part about, about your job? Uh, teaching people about the potential house that they're going to buy. Yeah. And really uh, going through it, showing them something that, showing somebody something that they just, they're like, oh, I didn't, I didn't even know that was a thing. Right. Whether it's positive or maybe not something favorable. Yeah. Right. Uh, absolutely, I'd say working with people and, and, and helping them with, with potentially the biggest investment of their life or our lives. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you again so much for coming in. Um, how can somebody get a hold of you if they're looking to book an inspection? Uh, right. Uh, StructureTech.com or uh, our office number 952 915 6466. Uh, you can reach out to me directly, 612-269-8471 uh, cool. as well. Yeah. All right. And as always, you know, stuff we covered today, you can find a lot of that in our red flag walk around checklist in the smart home buyer guide. You can download that. Just go to Twin Cities Real Estate Show, click on publications. And as mentioned, we're going to have your boss in to do new construction home inspections and why those are so important in just a few weeks. Take care, everybody, and have a great week. People always ask realtors, what is your commission? But what they should be asking is what is your rate of return? Commissions only vary by a couple of percent from agent to agent. However, the price per square foot you get just based on their experience and the quality of marketing they use can vary by 10% or more. At Bricks Real Estate, our agents use the right marketing and have the experience to get you top dollar for your house. See what we can do for you at BricksTwinCities.com. Not every title company is the same. There are many people involved with each real estate transaction and all of them need to be in the loop or a closing may get delayed. This is why the people at Network Title strive to provide swift scheduling and communication between the buyers, sellers, agents, and lenders. We know moving can be stressful, however your closing does not need to be. Check us out online at network-title.com.